Hey, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this InnoGear microphone kit. This is called the SM016. It's a USB stereo microphone kit. Comes with the USB condenser microphone, pop filter, shock mount, boom arm, uh, windscreen, and of course the USB cable. In the past I've been a little bit loath to try out or review products that I consider to be kind of on the cheap side because it's not something that I would necessarily buy for myself, you know, recommend people use. But then I've kind of come around a little bit thinking that there can be a lot of value in products like this for a lot of people who, A, don't have a lot of money to spend or don't want to spend a lot of money on a microphone, like it's just not that important to them, and B, who don't know a lot about microphones and don't, you know, care necessarily. And they just want something that's going to sound decent. You know, it's going to be an improvement over the webcam microphone or whatever other kind of built-in maybe camera microphone that they've been using to record their voice. We'll be, you know, listening to the microphone. Obviously, I'm recording it to the microphone currently. I am not going to do any anything in post-production to change the way the microphone sounds other than maybe adjust the levels a bit. We'll compare it to a few different microphones. I don't want to do like a crazy comparison, but and I don't have a whole lot of other relevant microphones, like nothing that is this cheap, to, this inexpensive, let me say. We'll do with the Rogue Pod mic, so that's like $100 dynamic mic but also does need an audio interface so the great thing about a microphone like this is you don't need anything other than your computer laptop or tablet smartphone in order to get up and recording you don't need any audio interface you don't need xlr cables anything like that and i thought i might compare also to randomly this tz audio products uh stellar x2 mic which is a lot more expensive but it is a condenser microphone so just to give you another comparison with how a maybe a higher quality condenser mic could sound for you InnoGear did send this to me this whole kit to test out and review but they don't get any input on this video what i do what i say nor do they get to see it before i publish the video so everything i'm going to say is going to be my own honest thoughts and opinions on how it sounds and how it feels and the quality of it etc cetera, etc cetera. As I've been listening to some recordings that I made on this microphone, I've been pretty impressed with how it sounds. I didn't have a whole lot of expectation for the price of this entire kit, which is somewhere around $30. I'm sure it fluctuates, but it's really, really inexpensive. I wasn't expecting the microphone to sound like much. It actually sounds pretty decent. It's going to be a huge improvement over your webcam or, you know, built-in microphone on a camera, for instance. So yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of shocking how good it sounds for the price. In terms of its build, it's all metal, but as you'll hear, we'll do some different kind of like banging around and moving things. It is, the microphone capsule is not isolated at all, so it is very resonant. If you tap things and bump things, it like resonates within that microphone body. <laughs> it makes a lot of noise. So you want to really be careful with this microphone if you do end up getting it to use it with the boom arm and get it isolated so you don't actually touch it. And you don't want to be moving it around during a recording. Let me just go ahead and move it so you can hear how it might be kind of like booming and resonating. Um, and if you accidentally touch the microphone, it's a very bare bones microphone. There's no switches or anything like that. Of course, you only get a USB B connector on the bottom of the microphone. The cable USB B to type A is about eight, 0.2 feet long, I believe it said. One of my bigger disappointments, again, I'm not surprised given the price, is that there's no headphone monitoring. So this doesn't have a headphone jack. So in order to monitor yourself, you're going to have to rely on software to do that. If you're using something like Zoom or Google, whatever the Google chat, Skype or something, it's easy to get your microphone set up in those applications. They'll give you a little playback function. So you can, you know, do you hear yourself in the microphone? And you can say yes. And then you can take the headphones off and, and know that you're good. You're actually recording and at a good level. Other software like OBS or maybe XSplit or other streaming software, it can be a little bit more complicated to set up monitoring of your headphone in that software. And the other thing is it's not, there's going to be some latency. So you're not going to be able to leave the headphones on while you're recording because you're going to be hearing yourself back after <laughs> you actually say what you're saying. That's one thing that's missing. Another thing that's missing from the microphone is a gain adjustment 
knob. So the only way to adjust your gain, again, is going to be in software. So even though I'm pretty critical on the physical mic itself, it does have some problems, especially in regards to handling noise. But there's actually some impressive features of the mic that I didn't touch on yet. And that has to do with the record quality. So a lot of USB mics, and even ones that are way more expensive than this one, record at 16-bit, either at 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. This can do that, but it can also record at 24-bit, all the way up to 192, <laughs> 192 kilohertz. You can set that in your operating system. So when you plug this microphone in, go into your Mac OS or Windows uh, audio preferences, and you can set both the bit depth, so whether 16 or 24-bit, and also the sample rate. Let's go ahead and just test out some different aspects of the microphone. You've been hearing how it sounds. I'm about six inches away from the microphone. I feel like it's a pretty decent distance for this mic. It's pretty bassy. So if you got even closer to it, it might be a little bit too bassy. This is a side address microphone. So you can see in this camera, hopefully, you want to be talking into the side that says Inno Gear. And there's also a little cardioid uh, polar pattern indicator there, so talk into that side. Let's see how it rejects plosives. I've been using the pop filter this whole time, but now with the pop filter removed, let's see how it does. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. And let's use the included pop filter. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. And just to test, test it out, let's go ahead and try it with the windscreen. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Let's go ahead and just see how well it picks up or rejects the noise of my keyboard, which is, you know, directly behind it. So this is a keyboard with Gatoron brown switches. And this is how it sounds to type on the keyboard and talk into the microphone at the same time. Hopefully you can hear my voice reasonably well and the keyboard is not too loud. And let's just compare it a little bit to the pod mic and the Stellar X2. Now we're on the Rode pod mic. This is a $100 dynamic microphone. It's an XLR microphone, so you're going to need to get an XLR cable and also an audio interface to plug it into, which will then in turn plug into your computer. So just wanted to give you a comparison between a $100 dynamic mic versus the InnoGear. We're back on the InnoGear SM016. This is how it sounds. And now we're gonna move on to the next microphone and compare it against the InnoGear. Now we're on the TechZone Audio Products Stellar X2. This is a condenser microphone, an XLR condenser. So just to give you an idea of how it sounds versus the $30-ish InnoGear USB microphone also a condenser. So that's enough about the microphone. There's uh, other stuff to talk about in this video. All the other stuff that you get is pretty decent. I'm actually surprised. Not only am I surprised with how good the microphone sounds for the price, but I'm surprised with the quality of everything else that you get. You could see in that unboxing montage when I pulled out the shock mount that one of the nylon, the end of the nylon band popped out. Not really that big of a deal to get it threaded back in where it needs to go. So whatever, not a huge deal. The pop filter itself is fabric. If you're not worried about blocking your face from the camera, I would definitely recommend going ahead and using this with this microphone to make sure you don't get uh, too many plosives. It will just spin freely here. So I guess that's good to get it positioned just how you need it or angled right. And it's pretty easy to bend it. And it clamps pretty well to the boom arm. So no real complaints about the pop filter. The shock mount is all plastic. It's decently well constructed. Um, I don't have any, I mean, it's pretty dense, pretty rigid. I don't think it's gonna fall apart or anything, but it's not a universal shock mount. It's only gonna work with this microphone. If you did wanna use a different microphone, you're gonna have to get a different mounting system for it. The boom arm is kind of like the most surprising thing to me. I wasn't expecting much. I'm actually really impressed by it. It is, you know, kind of a cheap exposed spring boom arm, but it holds its tension amazingly well, but even with the microphone removed, it holds its position. So if you're not used to these boom arms, it's kind of reassuring that it's not gonna like snap up and hit you or <laughs> hit you in the eye for, you know, that would be terrible. So even without any weight on it, it will hold its position, which is really good. Regardless of the weight of the microphone, it doesn't sag. So the pod mic is the heaviest microphone that I have. It weighs more than two pounds. This boom arm has no trouble holding the pod mic in just about every position. 
or really any position that you put it in. You can increase the tension of the boom arm. I can't imagine that you would need to do that unless maybe over time if it loosens or something, but the tension right out of the box in this position seems sufficient for just about anything that you could probably throw at it. It's not the longest boom arm. Um, it's probably about 30 inches in that ballpark. I'm sure it's probably in the manual and I'll put that on the screen. I like how easy it is to rotate the entire boom arm, but it, it stays where you put it. So in just terms of functionality, being able to position this and move this in, out of the way or get it where you want it, I really think this is surprisingly good. You should be careful with it being a scissor style boom arm. Don't put your fingers in between the two sides of the uh, the two ends, the two whatever arm parts, because as you move the angle, it will collapse and pinch your fingers. So make sure you always hold the outside of both of the parts. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> One thing I forgot to show in that unboxing is it does come with these little Velcro ties. Uh, in order to cinch down, tie up the USB cable to the boom arm. So just to wrap up this video, I didn't really have a whole lot of high expectations for this, considering everything that you get in the kit and considering the extremely low price. <laughs> I'm actually pleasantly surprised with just about everything that you get. There are some issues with the mic in terms of handling noise, but the quality of the microphone, just its record quality, is is actually pretty good. Uh, it's also impressive that you can record at 24-bit and that you can also do those really high sampling rates if you so desire. The boom arm, the tension, the ability to hold its position, and uh, the weight capacity is all very impressive. The pot filter and the shock mount are great things to have, and I don't really have any complaints about the quality of those either. The windscreen doesn't really seem necessary with this microphone, but if you want it, <laughs> you got it. Not too shabby, and again, if you are the kind of person who just wants something that they can buy all in one kit, plug and play, and just get up and recording with, I mean, it's hard to go wrong with something like this. Well, I think that's it for the video, so I appreciate it, and uh, maybe see you in another one.